Good morning everyone, it's Jeanette here from Enthusiastic Gardener and today I have a wonderful selection of some annuals and bits and pieces that I'm going to plant out. It is uh, quite chilly today, it's 11 degrees, it's Sunday. It hasn't really felt very May-ish so far, we've had I think one day of sun. So apart from that it's been raining, but I need to get these plants in the ground and um, Richard's actually gone away for the whole weekend. He went Friday, coming back tomorrow, Monday. He's gone with his brothers to visit all his family, which he has over in Copenhagen in Denmark. So Lottie, Lucy and I are home alone. So we can do whatever we like all weekend. Although yesterday, Lucy has, has a corneal ulcer in her eye. So we were down to the vets and now I have all eye drops and a whole load of stuff to go in her food. So she's quite poorly. So I'm looking after her, but in the meantime, she's gone asleep as always. So I'd like to show you what I have. And then I've got a couple of other updates as well to talk about. I'm going to show you my garden illusion gate as well, close up with a little bit more information because I have so many people ask about that. So I thought I'd share that with you, where I got it, what it actually looks like close up because I think it's an ideal thing to brighten up a corner which is might normally be a pretty nothing corner and create the illusion that there is something exciting beyond when really there isn't. But that's all about garden design I think and creating an illusion that there is more to explore. So I'll show you that. So first of all, I have these beautiful heligoniums or geraniums. I've got seven of this type, and then I've got three of this type, which has a beautiful little dark pink center. And then I have three of this type, which have a paler pink. Then I've already planted up one little container. I got three of these mixes and I've cheated because you buy these in my local garden centre and they're already chosen for you, the blend that all goes together. This one is called strawberries and cream. And uh, so yes, I've cheated. So I've planted one of those up and then it rained. So I had to abandon that idea of doing the second one. I love these. These are impatiens or busy lizzies and they're beautiful and if you deadhead them they will go on and on and on. They love the shade, don't put these in the sun but that's perfect for me because I can, I have as you know a lot of shade in which to cover. So I've bought three of those. Then we have the remainder of my hookahs which I'm going to show you close up. I mean, they'll take a while to establish, but they've all taken and I'm going to plant those. Then I have my cannas and I have four different cannas. Let's see if I can remember. Canna Monique and then I have Canna Stuttgart. I have Canna Durban and Canna Pretoria, I've remembered, but Yes, I want to put them out, but the thing is, I asked my good friend, I won't say the word because it will all come up on your devices, but it begins with an A and ends in an A. So I asked her this question. Do slugs and snails eat canna lilies? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, yes, they love them. Oh dear. So yes, they love, they love cannas. And then I asked her what was the best solution and she's told me this. From annasremedy.com, garlic cloves placed in the ground around plants will deter slugs. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm going to try putting little garlic cloves around the cannas. Let's see what, I'll probably end up with garlic plants, won't I? So I'm going to try that and then I'll just have to just be as watchful as possible. But what I'm going to do is plant everything 
and then I'll come back to you, show you where everything's gone. Then we'll do a couple of other little updates of little things I've noticed in the garden since the week has passed since I was last with you. Hope you enjoy it. Well, my battery died on me in the middle of filming, but it's okay. I can explain everything that I've done in the meantime. Can you see there and there? Two of the canners, and then we have the other two. You can tell because it's got the little stones. And then this fourth one is over there in that corner. And what I've done as well as putting on the stones, can you see I have put some garlic cloves. There's one there. I've even put the, the outer shell, the paper as well. So I've done that on every one of them. I've also put my slug repellent gel on as well. What more can I do for these slugs? And what I've done, I decided try and remember them all i've planted them in alphabetical order from a to z down here so this one up the end here is the durban then we have the monique then we have the pretoria i've forgotten already pretoria and the stuttgart so we'll see how they do oh also the little hookahs and they're barely seeable but we have a couple dotted around in this border here just dotted around and as in maybe a year's time they get a bit bigger then i can divide them do need something to go here i'm thinking red but fingers crossed for those now the other thing that i hadn't told you about do you remember my lobelia Last summer I had lobelia planted all the way around the circle. 
I put some pictures up here because it just looked so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And unfortunately, we had such a heat wave summer that they prematurely faded away. So let's see what happens. But you can see that I've planted all the way around and I've planted 56 little baby lobelias. I did that last Sunday, but I didn't film it. So all the way around the edge, we have the little lobelias. So I hope that will look beautiful in a couple of months time. And then let's have a look at the Garden Illusion Gate. I have a lot of people asking about this. So it's supposed to look as if you can go through the gate into another dimension even. But all it is, is a mirror. In fact, it's not even a mirror. It's an acrylic sheet. So it's okay for outdoors. But all it is, is the way that the wood is cut. It gives the illusion, I see this bit here is smaller and it gets larger. It's very clever. And because it's got an angle going downwards and that's smaller, and same at the bottom, you get the smaller there. I'd wanted one of these for a long time and I got mine, as I tell quite a lot of people who ask, from a company in the UK called Primrose. Primrose.co.uk They are actually out of stock at the moment. It's that time of year when everyone goes mad on garden things. But you could probably place an order. They're not that expensive. And I've told quite a few people and they have bought one. So I'm pleased to have been able to help. We also have the mirror, the window rather, over here from the same company, which is this one up here. So that's just a mirror, but it's supposed to look like a window and you can close and open those shutters. There's the pelagoniums that I planted. Forgot to tell you what I planted. So hopefully they should get quite a bit bigger and I think they'll look nice there. The impatiens are just in a little group over here. That's where those went. Bearing in mind these alliums won't be around forever, which is why also I planted these here in amongst my daffodils, try not to disturb my daffodils, but then when the daffodil foliage goes, and the alliums go, they are going to get a lot bigger because I had those a couple of years ago and they just got enormous. But the alliums are beginning to open, as you can see, lots of alliums. They're beginning to open and they will make a magnificent display, I'm hoping. The cherries have begun to form quite a lot and so that's going to be gorgeous as well there's some more hookahs they've been in since well the two weeks ago when I actually divided the hookahs they've been ever since in the ground you can see a few bits have drooped but on the whole I mean that's to be expected when the alliums finish I will have a, quite a lot of space here. I'm going to move that little lemon cypress somewhere and we'll have a lot of space to put something new in. I did have a bit of a disaster, I must tell you. I was moving or digging out this uh, agapanthus, which was here because it had just died. And this just fell backwards. Well, I kind of must have pushed it. It fell right into my Autumn Joy Sedum, which you can see, it fell right over there and just ripped off half of my Autumn Joy Sedum, unfortunately. Look, but funnily enough, 
Look, we have new ones growing since then, unless they were already there, could have been already there. Another snail, forgot to show you these. This was already planted. Doesn't look very good at the moment. It's in bright sunshine. It's turned out a really lovely day, but they'll take a couple of weeks to get going, but then hopefully they will be wonderful. Now, before I go, I'm just going to take you over to my dear friend Tina's garden. She sent me a video of her May garden, particularly her wisteria, which is magnificent. If you have wisteria, I think now's the time. It's going to be shining for you. And hers definitely is. So let's quickly go over and have a look at her garden. from me for this week i hope you've enjoyed this video the first little batch of annuals anyway thank you for watching i'm jeanette i'm the enthusiastic gardener down in essex southeast coast of england zone eight equivalent ish and uh hope you have a very fun week ahead and i will see you soon thank you for watching bye